Hi, I'm R.L. Parker. I'm an epic fantasy and dark fantasy author. I'm here today to show you how to set up a brand new Scrivener project from scratch to work with multiple novels, stories, short stories, series, and collect all of your notes all in one place in a single Scrivener project. This is how I work and I am offering this information in case this is how you wish to work. At the very least, this should show you how some of us use Scrivener to help you decide whether or not this is the right tool for you. So if you have any questions during this video, please leave a comment down below or message me through my website, Aralon.com. There will be a link in the description. And without further ado, here we go. So when I open my Scrivener, it starts in this project. This is my default project that I do my writing in, and I wanted this open so that I could show you where we're going to end up with all of the instructions that I'm going to give. I have <clears throat> my works broken down into multiple series. Some have novels that are already written, some are just plans that I have for the future. Inside each there are books or novels, and inside each novel are folders for each chapter, and different things that I might want to export or collect for that novel. Uh, front matter, back matter, incidentals include synopsis and marketing slugs that I've written, things like that. So for, for a specific novel, I keep everything in a specific folder for that novel. To begin with, what we want to do is when you start off your Scrivener, you'll have a slightly different screen if you don't have any projects, but if you have one and you want to test this out, you click File, New Project. That will bring up this screen here where we can pick which style of project we want to start with. Uh, for the most part, I usually direct people towards either blank or novel with parts under fiction. Um, for our purposes, we're going to use Novel with Parts. I believe that is what I used in the past. Um, it's been two years since I set up my Scrivener project, so bear with me. We want to give it a name. I'm just going to call this example, but with my original, I named it Aralon.scriv because all of my wor works are set in the same fictional world. And then you see it starts off with quite a lot of content that you are expected to just fill in, including this in instructional page and everything else. But we are going to write in a different way than Scrivener expects us to write. So we're going to remove a lot of this content. Some folders can't be removed, um, but for the ones that can, for the things we, want, we can get out of our way, we're going to right click on those things and select Move to Trash. I'm going to do that with everything inside manuscript because we're going to ignore the manuscript folder. Uh, by default Scrivener will want to export your manuscript folder and anything inside and then it just that's it. Um, we're going to get rid of these inside that. Uh, we can collapse the trash folder because we don't need it. Um, and then this is going to start us off with template sheets for character sketches and setting sketches. If you want, you can customize these. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a bit on my end. So you can customize these templates to have whatever you want them to have in them. If you want to collect a character's height, weight, uh, skin tone, hair color, hairstyle, any of that stuff, you can add those to this. Uh, template and then whenever you add a character to your character's folder you can then plug in the data that it's prompting you to plug in and every character will have the same template and it'll all collect the same data and it all just works better for you. Um, but the first thing I do after I start cleaning some things out because I don't care about these things either sorry I just noticed they were there is I'm gonna right click on templates and I'm going to add a new file and in this case I'm gonna add a scene because I want to style all of my scenes the same way and I like to write in a specific font. In my case I'm going to change my scene format to Laura because that's what I write in and that's what I publish in. And you can see it pulls back every font on my computer and I have a lot. Um, fair warning about fonts is you do actually have to legally license them 
or use a fair use or open source font. In my case, I'm using Laura. I usually write an 11 pitch or smaller um, and no style. I want to make sure I have my ruler showing. So if you click view and ruler, if I can find it. Why can't I find it? Editor layout, uh, no. Text editing, ruler, there it is. So it's under text editing. Um, this is turned on by default for me, so it's not something I normally have to do. I just wanted to make sure that the first line of a paragraph was set to tab over, and it is. Um, and then I always put something in here. If you do not, and then you compile scenes that have no content, things can get a little bit, of wonk, a little bit wonky. So I'm going to, and I just noticed I typoed the word scene, so I'll get to that in a second. I usually write uh, text here or something like that, and it reverted to the other font. So I hit Control A to highlight all my text, and I'm scrolling up to change it back to Laura. 11 pitch. And now anything that I start with a scene file will have Laura 11 pitch as its font. And now it is spelled scene. So then when I go to any other folder or any anywhere else, I can right click add scene and it will come in as that. But I'm going to take it a step further too and I'm going to check my labels. Right now my labels are all just colors. I don't like that. I like my labels to have a, a definition behind them. So I'm going to edit my labels and in here I'm going to just click minus over and over and over to get rid of them. And then I start a new one and I'm going to say scene. I know I'm going to need a chapter. I'm going to need character. And um, setting. So this is a place on my world. Um, event for my timeline stuff if I choose to document that. Um, I'm also going to work with novel and short story and series and say anthology. All right, and then from here they started off with default colors. If I double click, I can change the color. And for scene, I like that to be a light blue. Uh, for chapter, I'm going to make that a darker green. Uh, characters, I'll make red. Settings, um, this softer yellow. Events, a bright blue. Novel, we will go with a brown. Short story, I will go with a go with a teal. Um, and then series, we will make black, just do it and be different. And then anthology, this dark, dark, dark red. Okay, this is just to start out, and we can always change these later. Um, but I want to make sure that my section type for my scene is set to scene. And that my label color is set to scene. Um, and I believe there is a way to do this too. So icon... Um, we will go to, where is he? He's under to do. I don't like to do, well, that's status, but I'm going to change him to the blue notebook. I think that's what I used before. So now my scene has its own little icon. Um, it's got the correct label. It's got the correct section type. And the status is going to start off as to do then I will be able to add my scenes anywhere I want. I'm going to do the same thing for my series. Now let's get him inside here, please. Um, I'm going to add a 
another one for novel another one for chapter another one for anthology okay so series I just want to change the label and the icon you are a series good sir and your icon way down here is a book and we will go with a red book um, I had it set before where these were taking the colors from the label over the icon but I don't know why it's not doing that um, so actually we'll go with a brown book for the series and then novel or no sorry novel need or wow I am confusing myself bear with me the series needs to be that dark red because novels will be brown novel right click change icon to book brown book and make sure the label is set to novel chapter change my icon type change icon to green and change my label to chapter and then anthology change my icon I'm going to be a little different here and we'll go with the orange with the bar on it and the label will be anthology so now I'm going to also do some more prep I'm not going to use the manuscript folder so he's going down below my template files I'm not going to use my research folder because this is fiction and I'm probably not going to do a lot of research because I am writing in my own world if you need the research folder put it wherever you want um, I also do not use front matter because each of my books has their own front matter section so now I have a starting point and from here I just need to add folders that represent containers for my work so I will call this series one oh, I forgot the one series one I'll drag him into place to make it easier for the rest of them no I don't want you in characters I want you above characters thank you all right and I will I forgot to use the template so I'm actually going to delete that or add it just add a new one add series see how it's different when I use the template delete him by moving to trash and then I can add series and name it series 2 and then I'm gonna add an anthology anthology 1 okay so inside each of these I need to add novels so I'll add him in here I notice I dragged him up we'll call him novel 1 and click on novel so that it spawns at the same level nope I click too fast again add novel this is novel 2 and then click and add novel and now this is a three-part series inside my novel 1 and it's going to start off on the outside I want to add a chapter and I'm going to drag that up um, so this will be chapter 1 add chapter 2 add chapter 3 and so forth for another or for another thing that I do in here is I'm gonna actually click and add a blank folder now this folder doesn't need anything special this folder I'm going to name front matter now the front matter folder does not export you do not want that exporting so I don't want it styled I don't want any special things going on I'm gonna add another one for back matter 
and I'm going to add another one for incidentals. This is something I try to do with all of my books because then I can go into my front matter and I can add a new text, not a scene, but a text called title page. Um, then I can add uh, copyright. I can add, um, and notice these are all just text. They are not scenes. I don't want them formatted the same way. Um, so title page, copyright, dedication, add a new text, uh, title splash. Ah. And I'm going to also add in my prologue to my front matter section. Add this one will be a scene and I will call it prologue. So I usually get this set. They don't have any content yet, but they are all here to accept content when I'm ready to write them. Um, I know that I'm not going to necessarily have back matter with every book, but if you do, if you have a bonus short story or an epilogue, you would add those files there. And then for incidentals, you're usually going to need a synopsis of more than one type, but um, just one to get us going. And then you're going to need a blurb to help you sell your book eventually. And you might even want to do another file here for your back panel. This will be the shorter non-spoilery synopsis that ends up on the back panel of your book once it's formatted. Um, for my scene, my chapters, Scrivener wants you to write in scenes, and I encourage this. This means that a chapter doesn't necessarily have to be all one big thing happening, and then you're when you need a break for a, a change in location or a change in point of view, it doesn't have to be a new chapter. Um, scene breaks actually seem to be a dying art, and they are a great way to segment a body of work for the reader so that they can easily transition between places um, it also helps to reduce paper loss and print costs because chapter breaks should, if you're trying to be professional, should always start on the right hand facing page. And that means that you usually have a lot of dead white space with no content on the left facing page before a chapter. Um, if you are doing that and doing only chapter breaks for your book, then you are going to end up with a 40, 50, 60, I've seen 100, pay, 100 chapter books you would have 100 pages that are blank. That gets expensive really fast and it makes no sense. So you can take and condense your work and make it easier for the reader and easier for the printer and cheaper to print by having uh, scene breaks rather than chapter breaks wherever that makes sense. And I can't tell you the formula for that because there is no formula for that. It has to be what makes sense to you as the author and what feels right to the reader. Uh, that is going to be subjective based on your work and your style. Uh, but I use scene breaks quite extensively. Um, and that is because of the way that I write and the way I like my books to flow. But you can see it's easy enough to using those templates to just add scenes and they start off with the formatting that I like to edit and author in. Um, if I click on the chapter, I can see all of my scenes in a grid. And there are a few different views for that. There is this view here, which uh, groups all of the sub documents in as a single stream. So you can actually view this way and read all of your scenes in a flow if you've already written them. You also have corkboard view where you can drag them around and you'll see on the left my scene one and scene two change places. This corkboard view will show you your general synopsis of an individual scene and then it will also give you the scene title. Um, what this won't give you is metadata. I usually uh, prefer to look at the metadata for my scenes, and that is what you see here. Now, I remove the status column usually and some other things, um, but let me show you what I mean by custom metadata. So if you're not uh, used to that term, if you've done any IT work, you'll know what it is, or if you've done any anything extensive in uh, just geekdom in general, like helping people manage wikis and you know things like that in a given fandom. Metadata, custom metadata or extended metadata, it just refers to information about a piece of data. So if you think of your scene as a piece of data, the metadata is additional data about that that isn't that. 
So you would have your whole scene text, and then you'd have these little snippets of details that help you to organize and track that work later on, but they don't compile with the scene. They don't go into your book. Um, so we're going to project, and I'm gonna go into project settings. And in here, there is custom metadata. So I wanna add one and call it start DT. Add another one, call it end DT. Add another one called location. Another one, actors. And another one, tension. Now I'm gonna go back through these. Say start DT, I want to be center aligned and have, oh, why won't you change the text color? Oh, use colored text. That's why. So if you check use colored text, you can change the uh, how it appears in your outline mode. So I want dark red for that, and I'm going to do a blue for this one. Uh, location, we'll use that, and location can be left aligned. I'll make him green. And then actors, we will use color text again. And we make these guys yellow. And then tension, use color text. And we'll make him purple. This is not to say this is how you have to do it. This is just how I'm setting it up for this example. I highly recommend you continue tweaking and playing with these settings until you get exactly what you want. Okay, so I've got those set up. Now let me see if I can remember how to customize this screen. I think that it might be under view, uh, uh, outline, um, outliner options, here we go. We don't want status, Ugh. outliner options. We don't want the label, view, outliner options. We don't want the section type, view, outliner options. I want the start DT, outliner options, NDT. Location, actors, and tension. Okay, and then I'll drag these around a little bit to make it a little bit more palatable to use. Oh, let's bring you back for now. Let's start with start date time. I have my own. date time format for my world you might you might not that is up to you it is not a necessity that is a little extensive on the world building so let's just say that i wanted this to be um i'm going to use earth date time so this one's on 01 um 29 to 2023 at 11:52 a.m and I'm not going to enter all of them, but this shows you that you can set this up to track any additional data about your scenes that you want. And when you're in this view, you can see that. This is the outliner view up here in the top. And I, ugh, which I turned off by clicking on it. Um, you can always go right back to the corkboard view and drag things around, or you can drag things here. So it gives you a lot of flexibility with how you're writing and how you're working. Um, but okay, Rick, I've got these things done. How do I get them exported? Well, let's start at the top and I'm going to say, I'm going to pretend that these are all done. And I'm going to say, add these to a collection. Sorry, let's add, collect, add to collection, new collection, since we haven't named one or created one yet. And I'm going to call this book one, just as an example. Um, you would name this what your actual book's name is. But you can see all of the, those content files that I selected came into this collection. If I click back on Binder, I can then right click on 
or I can click on chapter and the two scenes. I can add those, add to collection, book one, and I can even add chapter two and three. Add to collection, book one. Now if I click back on book one at the top, you can see that it added everything in because I added a big group of things. Chapter one landed out of position, so I just grab, drag him up. Now this is where you will start deviating from the norm. In this view, uh, this view in the order of scenes is not affected by what you do in your corkboard. When you edit your corkboard or you're in your, your writing pane in the binder, so if you are in this screen or you are in the outline screen or you are in the binder and you drag files around, that does not affect your collection. So keep that in mind. But the power of this is that I now have a single collection that is pointed to novel one and any content that I manually add to that collection. And then when I click on compile and I say what I want to compile, which is going to be instead of the manuscript folder, I'm going to pick book one. And it brings in only the content that I have identified as being members of book one. This is what allows me or empowers me to write multiple novels, multiple short stories in a single Scrivener project. So if we actually go back to my other Scrivener project, ugh, if I could find it in the list. Oh, I didn't open it. I'm sorry, bear with me. So if I go back to my other Scrivener project by opening it here, erlon.scriv, If it will do it, airline.script, please. Okay. You will see that I have multiple collections up here in the top of my screen. Um, ignore all hail the new gods. That isn't actually being written right now. I was prototyping it and stopped. But my novel Sissy is here, my novel Dusk, and my novel Bathe in the Blood of Ravens are here. And each one has its own collection. When I go and I view them in the binder, there's Sissy, there's Dusk, and Bathe in the Blood of Ravens is below this series. So you can see that this allows me to keep all of my writing in one place. And if I need to, if I'm writing on Sissy, for example, and I need to go see, hey, what did I call that thing back in Bathe in the Blood of Ravens? And I forgot to take the note, which I'm notorious for. I can go and click into Bathe in the Blood of Ravens, find that scene, and look it up. Um, if you want to see metadata in use, Look at the right side of this screen. I will click on the Catalyst chapter from Dusk, and you can see the name of the scene, the total word count, the start time, start date, the end date, location, and the participants and tension. This one was not fully documented because I wrote really fast. That was 137,000 words that, thanks to Scrivener isolating the way I work, I was able to write all 137,000 words in a single month. Um, Legacy is a good example. It's the first chapter from Bathe in the Blood of Ravens, and you can see how the the tension just spikes here on this scene. Um, and that's minor spoiler if you haven't read the book, but that one I use a 0 to 10 scale, and this one the tension spikes at 10, and it, it's disastrous for the main character. But in this case, my timeline on Bathe in the Blood of Ravens is so sensitive that I have to track the hour of the day that a scene starts and ends, as well as the date. And this is world date. This is not earth date. Um, so uh, you can use world building systems. There are apps that tie into Scrivener, apps that don't. There's all of these different online services that you can use to build a timeline. I personally found all of those to be too burdensome to my writing process. I spent too much time maintaining those and not enough time writing. Um, and at the end of the day, there was one of them that I used that created custom metadata in my Scrivener project um, in order to do the tracking so that when I was writing a scene, I would update the custom metadata and then that would update the timeline in that other app. Well, that was because that other app was constantly scraping what I was doing in Scrivener to find updates in that custom metadata, which caused my Scrivener to lag out and crash. I believe that was Aeron, Aeron Timeline or something like or Aeon Timeline. Um, so ultimately, I scrapped that software that I paid for, um, and I've never touched it again. And I came back to Scrivener and created my own custom metadata, my own way of tracking, and it works. It works really well for me, and the way that I write 
and it just lets me keep track of everything in one place in a nice concise way i can see everything that happened who it happened to what place they were standing at whether it raven's nest or fel vizure the the magic school or fel rashan the warrior school what the tension level was and if i need to go and glance back at any part of Baden the blood of ravens to see what was going on that's easy for me because of the way that i have things set up um, so back in this starter project you would be able to start writing right here. You can create the scaffolding for how your book is going to be laid out, your front matter, your back matter, your incidentals, your chapters. If you know how many chapters you're going to have or you're bringing in a project from Word that you wrote or Google Docs and you're transitioning into Scrivener, go ahead and set them up and then go find those scenes and copy and paste into here. Change the formatting however you like because when you compile, your formatting is going to change anyways. Um, I may do another video on the compile settings, but this is the newest version of Scrivener and I just recently updated and I'm not all the way 100% on the compile options because I don't trust or I don't use Scrivener's formatting. I use different software entirely to do my formatting, so what Scrivener exports as doesn't matter to me. Um, the majority of my compiles are out of Scrivener as a project and actually I will show you in mine so if I click compile and I wait for it to load and then I change this to dusk I then pick Microsoft Word up here at top and I compile I don't do anything else with it that's gonna land in a Word document and I then just scroll through the Word document and I right click on all of the headings the, which are the chapter titles I make sure that they are heading one format and then I can drag that doc into Google Docs and share it with my editor or with my alpha reader or with my beta readers. That is the furthest I, I take anything that Scrivener is formatting. Everything else I do in Affinity Publisher for print or Atticus for ebook. And I will have videos coming in the near future for those pieces of software. So. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Um, feel, please like and share this video. Uh, subscribe for more like this. And uh, find me on social media. If you visit my website, linked in the profile or in the description, you will find links to all of my socials. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, here on YouTube, Facebook. You name it, I'm probably there. So there are probably links to it somewhere on my website. Most of my core ones are at the top of the first page. Um, so, hope to hear from you soon. I hope you liked the video and I hope this helped someone.